today we're gonna go over how to piece together the top of your quilt. So this is my favorite part about making the quilt. I love sewing on my sewing machine and if you're a beginner to this, you will too. The trick thing is just don't be afraid of the sewing machine. Just look at the manual, look how to do it. Um, look how to do it. Look up like how to use it, things like threading it, making bobbins, all that sort of stuff. So don't be afraid of your sewing machine. It takes a lot, honestly, to mess it up or ruin it. Just become comfortable with it. I'll show you a few of the basics. Um, again, it's not exactly the same for every single sewing machine, but you'll get the general idea, I think, by showing you on mine, because I've used at least three different ones now, and they've all been the same. The only difference um, that I think you could potentially encounter is that my bobbins are front-loading instead of top-down loading, and I've seen machines like that, but I don't know how to make or insert bobbins for machines like that, but I'm sure it probably works the same way, it's just in the top and not you know, front loading like mine is. So um, I'll show you a few of those things and then we'll get started with piecing it together. I want to go over the materials that you're going to need and have on hand. The first one is, other than your sewing machine of course, uh, your seam ripper. You're going to want your pencil, your fabric scissors, some extra needles just in case yours break on your machine. Again, if it happens, not a big deal. Not necessarily an indication that you're doing anything wrong. Just sometimes, sometimes it happens. Um, thread. And then extra bobbins. If you have them, sorry, it's kind of clear so it's hard to see, but um, extra bobbins. We're going to be making those up right now just so that we don't have to stop in the middle of our sewing and make a bobbin because sometimes that can be really annoying when that happens so let's just have the extra bobbins ready um, to go and then after, other than that I'm looking around just for the top piecing I think that we're good you're gonna need some pins later on when we start sewing the rows to one another but for the purposes of sewing like the actual blocks to each other don't worry about pins it's not they're six inches it's not really going to make or break. So, oh, and then your quilting foot. So if you do have a quarter inch, let me take mine off of my machine here. If you do have the quarter inch seam presser foot, then we can go ahead and put that on. If not, you can use your regular presser foot that comes with it. You should just take a piece of tape, painter's tape, several layers actually of painter's tape and masking tape, measure a quarter inch from where the needle drops down into the machine, measure a quarter inch to the right of that, and then add a painter's tape line to that edge. And so that's where you're gonna know to butt up your fabric against that edge when you're sewing your seams so that they're perfect and straight every time. So trust me, those guides will be a lifesaver. If you have the presser foot, then you're just gonna kind of butt up your fabric against this little line here as you sew and the seams will be dead on every time and hopefully make for an easier process putting it together, not something so kind of jaggedy and jarring. But you know, even if you don't do that, it has character. The first one I ever made, I was just like flying by the seat of my pants. There was no quarter inch seam presser foot that I was using at the time. I just put it together and it's wonky and not perfect. And you know what? It's the quilt that my, fam like my family actually argues over who gets to use it whenever I'm at my parents' house. So it's still there lives on, gets washed all the time. I made that when I was in like, God, fifth grade, something, I don't know, something like, and we still use it and adore it and cherish it. So you will too. So let's get started. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna do here is change out the presser foot that's currently in here with the quarter inch seam presser foot if you have one. Again, if you're not going to use a special presser foot, you can just take a piece of painter's tape, measure over to the edge of where this needle drops down into the machine, and put the edge of the tape along the quarter inch seam line. So a quarter inch away from where this needle drops. So it's generally going to be like right up along the edge of where these feed dogs are right there. These are the feed dogs of your machine. They kind of um, move your fabric uh, forward. So to change out your presser foot, 
Again, your machine manual should have in, uh, should have instructions, but I found really it's the same for all the ones I've used. There's a little latch back here. I'll see if I can turn my machine so you can see it. This latch right here, you just move that up, pull it out, insert the presser foot up in there, and then put the latch back down so it's secure in place, and that's it. That's changing out the presser foot. Again, don't be afraid of your machine. Just kind of get in there and and use it. You know, it's gonna take a lot to break it. So that's changing out the presser foot. Um, I definitely recommend have making sure your machine is off before you change the presser foot. You just never know, like if your foot accidentally hits the pedal or you know, just just have the machine off just in case when you're using anything to change out needles or changing out the presser foot. Just make sure your machine is off. And on that note with the needles, I've been using this one for quite a while, so I'm going to change it out with a fresh one. Again, really simple process. So your sewing machine needles, hope that's coming off on there, but there's a flat edge and a round edge. On my machines that I've used, the flat edge goes in the back and the round edge faces you. There's a little twisty right here. So we're just gonna unscrew that. This needle comes out. And then this one, you'll see when it goes in there, how it fits in there. But the circular part, the rounded part faces you. Just kind of hold on to it there and then screw it back in. And that's changing out the needle. All right, the next thing I'm gonna show you guys how to do real quick is to make a fresh bobbin. So I won't sit here and make you watch me do all of these, but it's good to have, you know, three or four of these already made up and ready to go so that when you get sewing and you run out of your bobbin thread down below that all you have to do is just switch in a new one. You don't have to stop to make a new bobbin. This is a bobbin, they come in metal, plastic, um, and this is the one I'm going to use to show you for now. So to fill, to wind your bobbin, if your machine is already threaded, cut the thread at the top and pull it out the excess through the bottom. Get in the habit of doing that. Try not to be pulling your thread out from the top because it's not the direction that the thread should be going when um, it's moving through your machine and it can over time damage the parts of your machine. So try to get in the habit of whenever you want to change your thread on the top, or make a new bobbin, cut the thread at the top and pull the excess out through the bottom, not pulling it out through the top. And then again, you can read your instructions for how to do this for your specific machine, but they're generally all the same. So the thread is coming off from the back of the spool, over the front, through the back of the bobbin winder portion. And we're gonna take the bobbin, wind some excess, pre-wind some excess onto it. And then the thread should be in the back of your bobbin. So coming from, not around the front, but let's see if I can show you guys that better. Yeah, from the back of the bobbin, not over the front. And then depending on your machine, you'll either push this over or push the stopper over. Turn your machine on, sorry, not the camera and then press the pedal slowly at first until it kind of gets on there. See, this is already kind of creating a little mess. One second. Not a big deal. Start slowly. And then once you see that it's lining up on there, you just kind of push it faster and keep going. And the machine generally will either, once it's all the way full, will push this, sorry, I keep putting the thing. The machine will generally push, kick off the stopper or it'll push the winder off of it automatically whenever it's done. Take that. And that is winding your bobbin. All right, and now I'm gonna go over how to thread your machine 
Again, all these instructions should be in your manual, not difficult, but just a quick show how. Thread comes from behind the spool, goes into this first little lip on the top of the machine, feeds it down. You bring it all the way down and there's a part right here that you're going to wind it down below, back up. And this part might be a little bit difficult to describe or see, but there's a left side and a right side to this kind of metal piece that comes out right here. I'll show you if I can get it. See if I turn the um, knob on the side over here. Sorry. If I turn the knob on the side over here, you can kind of see it. First, you're going to go to the right side of it, back around, and up through the left side. Maybe. And then down to this little hooky thing on the top of the needle. See, you might need to look, you might need to refer to your manual to see what it looks like. So I'm not sure you're gonna be able to see that properly, but down and around to the hook of the needle. On my old machine, it was on this side. So don't necessarily think it's always gonna come in through the left. And then once it's through into the, this little ledge here, that's when you're going to thread it through your needle. And last, before we start piecing, I'm going to show you quickly how to take out your bobbin and then put a new fresh one in. So you'll remove the front plate. Again, this is the front loading one. If it's a top loading one, I assume you'll just take it up from the top, but read your manual instructions. This little metal part here, this is your bobbin holder. So you're gonna pull up this latch from the front, pull it out. The bobbin holder, and this is your bobbin, P or your bobbin right here. So you're gonna take your bobbin, put it into the bobbin holder. And then you'll see on the top of the bobbin holder, hoping it's gonna focus, but there's a little lip right here. You're gonna take your thread, pull it up and around underneath. It's gonna feel strange, but pull it up and around to the front where there's this kind of window right here. So using again that lip, you're going to pull the thread through there and then up and around and under this ledge until it's in this little window here. And then we'll just put it back in. And so to put it back in, you're gonna hold on to this little latch here. This little top piece always, at least in every single one I've used, this little top metal piece here faces up. And I don't know, let me take off my camera real quick so you can see. There is, once you put it in there, You'll know if you've put it in right if it latches into place. If you can pull it out really easily, it's not it's not in place. So you need to pull this part forward and kind of nestle it in there until it's notched into place. If you can pull it out, it's not pull it out, it's not in there. So again, just be kind of tricky, just kind of trust test it. You'll know when you've got it in there, but just to show you, so if I like think I have it nudged in there and I can pull it out like I can right here even though I can like move it side to side and it seems tight if I can pull it out without having to pull on this latch right here it's not in there so just kind of make sure you have the latch open push it in release the latch if you can't pull it out it's secure and this thread will just be sticking out here until we get it up through the chamber which I'll show you now Okay, so the quickest way I know how to do it, kind of pull a little bit of a longer tail, take your, uh, put your foot on the pedal, and push down once on it so that, the needle, so that the needle goes down into the chamber once and back up. So now you see that it's kind of down in there. And then pull your thread, and then it'll pull a little loop of the bobbin up, and then you can kind of just get that get that out like that and that's it um, again I this the purposes of this quilting video tutorial series is not to really show you how to use your machine it's just that this is a really good beginner project for um, a, like first-time sewist so if you need to definitely just refer to your machine for a lot of this stuff they're probably way better tutorials than what I just showed you right now about how to get 
um, your machine set up for this, but this is just like a good basic beginner for how to set up your machine to begin piecing your quilt. And now we'll get on to the piecing. Thank you. 